I want to I want to go into some really cool stuff today around um, psychological tension, what's pulling on us, and uh, I think you're all going to really really enjoy it. Uh, so let's get into it. What is something that you're choosing to create that you feel is stuck? Okay, so remember any choice that you're you're choosing, it's either it's either flowing or moving. Okay, it's oscillating or it's stuck. And oscillating is is when we move towards something and then we're pulled back towards something and pulled back, towards something and pulled back. And there's a reason why we oscillate, okay? And Robert Fritz in his, his, his amazing book, The Path of Least Resistance, talks about this secondary tension. So there's, there's one tension, and that is, here we are in our current reality, and then here is our, our, uh, our vision, okay? So for example, we say, you know, I'm single, and I want to, you know, be in a relationship. Okay, so that's a that, there's tension there. This that says C R. Uh, even I can't see it, and I'm sitting here. C R. Uh, current reality and vision. Okay, so there's a, there's tension there, you know, and tension me is seeking to release. It's like I'm here, and I prefer to be there. Does that make sense, everyone? I'm here. I prefer to be there. There's a tension. I want to be there. You can feel it. A lot of people ask me, Chris, what do you mean when you say the word tension? Well, I, I mean that there is something that's out of balance. It, energy is going to always move on the path of least resistance. Okay, so it's saying I'm here. I want to be there. The energy that you are is saying I'm here. I want to be there. And so the interesting thing is, as we go, well, I've got this tension. Why wouldn't I just act towards it? Well, it's usually because we're not actually trying to resolve what we think we're trying to resolve, right? Usually we think, hey, I'm just going for this thing that I want, but, but usually we're not, okay? Usually we have some sort of wound over here. And what we think we want to create, what we're actually going for is actually to get away from this wound, you see? In the current reality, we actually have a wound and we're trying to get away from it. So in this structure, the person is single, they want to be in a relationship. The wound could be something like I'm not good enough unless I'm in a relationship. Does this make sense, everyone? Or I'm lonely without the relationship or, or uh, you know, I'm only deserving. I'm only perfect if I have an amazing relationship. Type in yes if you're getting this. Who's with me? Who's with me on this? And so one of the problems is, is when we're going for a vision, when we're going for a vision and we have a current reality that is actually us trying to get away from a wound, it's this that is causing the second lot of tension, which is psychological tension, which is holding us here. Because the setup, all right, the setup is this. The setup is, when I have that, then I will solve this wound. What's that, Kelly? Is that a brain explosion? When I, when I make the million dollars, I will no longer have this wound. Who's with me? That's, it. That's the setup, okay? So just think about it, okay? I'm broken, but when I go and get this, then I won't be broken, right? I'm incomplete. As William Whitecloud would say, I'm incomplete. It's that there's something that I need to solve. And so in Fritz's book, he talks about this. And if you guys haven't read The Path of Least Resistance, it's really something you should read. He talks about how most of the world it has set up their visions or their future just trying to solve, solve things. And so this really sets up a big problem that we're going to address today. And that is, as you move towards the vision, okay, there is more risk of the wound being seen, the wound being uh, shown, the wound being true. Let me explain. You have a wound, let's say, of not being good enough. I'll be, and so you set this vision of you want to create an amazing business. So as you move towards creating the amazing business, there's a chance that the business might fail, right? 
So there's a chance that the wound could be true. And so we set up this weird game where we don't want the wound to be seen or to be known to be true. And so we go for it and then we create distraction. We create sabotage to go back here instead of going through the failure and going after what we want. Who's getting this? Type in a yes if you're getting this loud and clear. We, this is such a big setup. Well, I know Claire is. Claire now that, yeah, they, they've, they've trained in some of this stuff. Who's not, anyone go, I don't know if I get this, Chris. Nice. And it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And so we end up with these two tensions. So we have this one tension. We're going, yeah, that's what I want. And then we wonder, as soon as we start moving towards it, do I really want that? Am I good enough to do this? Well, I better get perfect. I better get ready. I can't fail. Ah, we do all these things rather than just going for it. Rather than just going for it, just think about it. You want to be in a relationship, you know, go and talk to lots of people who are, you know, who are into the things you're into of the opposite sex that you're attracted to. Go and have those conversations, go on dates, go for it. But instead, you know, well, I've got to go to the gym. I've got to do, 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 do. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do this, right? I want to make lots of money. Well, ring people and ask them to buy your product. Well, I've got to get my website. I've got to get my thing. And we do all this, this other stuff. Does this make sense? And that other stuff is so that the wound doesn't get seen, that it doesn't go out there. And so here's something that we really must, we really must do is we must understand this construct. We must really understand this construct and go, okay, cool. So how do I make it? So I choose what I want and I just go for it. How do I make that? To, how do I get that? Wouldn't you like that? Where you say, you know what? I want to make a million dollars. And then the next day you're doing the things that you need to do to make the money right? You're starting the business. You're asking people to buy. You, you, know, you want to be in a relationship. So you're doing the things straight away. Because how many of you have things you want to go for? You pretty much know what you should do. And you've known what to do for a long time. But you keep going and do other things. Dion's like, yep. Right? We go and do these other things. So what do we do? Here's my question. Instead of doing what it is we're supposed to do, what are the things that we do instead? So that's what we're going to explore today. And then we're going to help with the super conscious to bring this in and bring it together, um, which is, yeah, awesome, Wendy. I'll, Wendy's like, I've got an audio issue. issue and I'm like, yeah, awesome. <laughs> like she can hear me. A better type to her. No problems. Cool. So I'd love you all just to tune in and, and ask yourself, what is something that you'd like to create that haven't that, and you haven't yet? What is something you would like to create but haven't yet? And, and you know, type it in or give me a yes if you've written it down. I want you to choose something that's true for you that you're wanting to create but haven't yet. You can either type in a yes or type in what it is, uh, just so you know. Cool. 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 So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna pull this up um, from the the workbook. So those of you who have been to the, the two day, uh, you know the workbook. And, and you know that we talk about making a, a true choice, okay? And I wanna get us into making these true choices and, and really looking at it, okay? Because it's almost like we fundamentally haven't created a true choice, okay? So the first way, and so has everyone written their true choice, a choice down now? Because I'm going to have you judge it against this. Because without a true choice, let me sell you on it. Without a true choice, you're only choosing to create something to get away from something. And that means the wound must live on. I want everyone to hear this. If you're only choosing something 
to get away from a wound, the wound has all the power. The problem, the, the you feeling incomplete, you not being good enough, you know, needing to be perfect, that has to stay alive because it's the, it, you know, it's the mother that birthed this. It is the engine. It is the, it is the power. Yeah, it is, Deborah. It's with the two-day recording. So the, the first way, and does that make sense to everyone? Like if you feel that you're not good enough and the way you're going to be good enough is make a lot of money, what you have to do is you have to keep that not good enough feeling as you go make lots of money. Guys, how many people have you seen rise to success only to completely destroy it by maybe killing themselves or failed marriages or all sorts because they never, they were only doing that to resolve a way that they themselves felt, you know, incomplete or wounded. It's just crazy. Whereas those who create the true success aren't doing it to solve this wound. So, so here's how we do it. The first way that we create an ineffective choice, okay? And someone please type this in for me. So you make a choice by limitation, okay? You choose only what seems possible. This is one of the ways we make a, 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 a ineffective or not good choice. And it's, I know for some of you going, Chris, this is, you know, this is a, this is foundational stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but honestly, a lot of us are not doing the foundational stuff. Is that fair? Is that fair to say? It's like we've got to get the basics. Okay. So first one is we choose by limitation. And you can see this a mile away. People say, uh, I want an amazing relationship with this person or you know, this specific person, because it has to be them, because they could never leave me. You know, I want uh, to make this much money. I want to have only this. They they limit themselves. They know they don't go for what's true. Okay. So that's the first one. The second, the second way we make a ineffective choice is choice by indirectness. Okay. So instead of choosing what we want, instead of choosing freedom, instead of choosing to impact the world, we choose uh, that we have to have a coaching business, right? Or that we choose we have to have a property portfolio. Instead of choosing passive income or unlimited passive income, we're choosing the process, the way we have to get there. So, uh, you know, a lot of people say, I say, what's your choice? They say to me, Chris, I want to go to the gym five times a week. And I'm like, great. You're choosing the process. What you really want is what? Energy, healthy body, amazing thing, da, da, da. What is it, right? Then they realize, you know what? I don't even know what I want in this area of life. I've just been told that I have to go to the gym because I have to look a certain way instead of choosing what they truly want. So that's the second way that we make our choice wrong. I know Kelly, this is the, it's a big thing. Kelly just uh, messaged me, said, she said, this is news to me and I've been in the personal development for 20 years. It's big, it's big. We don't just have to recode here, Kelly. We have a lot of good stuff because when we're making these choices, we're making them out of the problem solving orientation. And I say this all the time. I see a world out there of people who just don't have problems, they're numb. And there is a massive difference from people who are living their dream versus people who just don't have a problem. Don't have a problem is just like, I, you know, my job's just good enough. My income's just good enough. Uh, my relationship's just good enough. I've got just a good enough body. They're just here because all they did is solve the problem. Instead of going, you know what I really want, what I want to go for is this. Because when you go for stuff, the wound could be seen. I'm not good enough. I need to be perfect. You know, that has to be shown. Who's following this, by the way? Who's with me? I've got quite a few of you on here. Give me some love. Is it you guys here? Yeah, so it's a big deal. Okay, so the next one is choice by elimination. Okay, this is when you don't actually choose. Okay, and instead, you eliminate all other possibilities. So there really is only one choice, right? So you never actually just saying, this is what I want. Uh, instead, you, you go through this whole process of, well, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, I'll just be an accountant. You know, a lot of, a lot of people just have, have chosen and so you talk to them and you go do you really actually want to do that do you really want to do that or was that just because you it was the best option out of the lot the next is choice by default now this isn't true for you guys because you wouldn't be in this program if you chose by default but how many of you know people out there that don't make a choice and they just let the world just take them by you know they're not, the, they're, not, they're not focused on what they want. They're just like a, a feather, like floating on the water, wherever the river takes them. Oh, that's just, that's just life. 
So they never actually are the creator of their own life. The next one is a conditional choice. And uh, um, a lot of people put conditions on their choices. I see this in business a lot, okay? And a lot of you might trigger you when I say this. A lot of people go to me, well, Chris, I want a heart-centered business. And I'm like, oh, okay. Why does it need to be heart-centered? And they're like, well, I wouldn't do anything else. And I'm like, exactly. So can we just choose a profitable business? Because you wouldn't do something that wasn't, hasn't got your heart in it. But see, they have to make it this, this thing. Just hear me out on this. I can hear it already. Hear me out on this. If you just choose to have a profitable business that does good things for people, you just choose it. You choose, I just choose to have a profitable business. And then you choose with that money to do good things, right? You, you, you do it, you're doing it, right? But instead we go, well, you know, I don't want to hurt people with my business or I don't want to be judged with da, 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 da. So you don't, it's putting conditions on your choice rather than just going, you know what I really want? I want a business that makes money and that works without me. And I say, do you know a good one? And you go, yeah, what, Chris, what's a good one? And I go, owning a cleaning company. And you go, what? I'm not passionate about a cleaning company. And I go, exactly. But what you want is a passive business that works out. You're right. No, no. Well, it has to be. I have to be passionate about it. And I have to do it. And we put all these things on it. Who's with me? Right? So we, 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 we create an effective choice by putting conditions on them. Choice by reaction. Okay. A lot of times we react to something that, you know, has, has gone on. And we say, well, I, I want this now. So we, we hate our boss. So we hate that. So we choose, we choose by reaction. So... There's, there's two more, and I'll go real quickly through them. One is choice by consensus, which is we don't choose. We get everyone else's ideas for our life, our parents, our spouse, our kids, and we choose by consensus. And the last one is we choose by some weird metaphysical thing, right? You know, that because, because you said you wanted this and then you walk down this, this pathway, some metaphysical concept, um, that's what created your choice, you know, just, just, it's, it's interesting. So I wanted to take you through those choices, choice by limitation, indirectness by elimination, default, uh, conditions, reaction, consensus, and uh, metaphysical uh, concept. And so a lot of us need to ask ourselves, do I have a true choice? Okay. And if not, that's the fundamental place to, to work with. So let me ask this, and I've got, who's in my certification? So I've got quite a few people here in my certification. Peter, I'm looking at you. Rosemary, I'm looking at you. Okay, Sam's new, so Kelly's new. How do we know if it's a true choice? Wendy's there, she can hear me now, I hope. Hey guys, if you change your chat box to say all panelists and attendees, others can see what you're writing. If you just want it to be me, just write to change it to all panelists. So here's the question for everyone. Yeah, right. How do you know if you've got a true choice? How do you know it's true and not one of these ineffective ones? How do you know that it's just something that you want and that you're not trying to solve a problem? You're not trying to solve a wound. You're not doing it because of some reaction. How do you just know it's true? How do you know it's just a true thing? How do you know it's true? Right on, Peter. Right on, Bree. Rosemary, Peter, Bree. That's it. The answer is this there's no strings. You just choosing it you love it right Claire just because you want it people go to me Chris why do you want to grow a massive profitable business because that's what lights me up that's fun that's what I choose you see there's no reason I'm not going to be different when I have that I've already got it <laughs> makes sense and so you just choose it how do you also know if it was to go you, you, you're the same. You're just choosing it. Does that make sense? See, that's another good test, Peter, is if that, if what you're having was not to be there. You see, a lot of times in relationship, this is a big thing. Well, oh, I'm choosing to have an amazing relationship. 
But if it wasn't there, how would you still feel? Well, shit, I was just choosing it because I feel like I need it. So who feels like they're getting something out of tonight? I hope so. It's very important to create a true, true choice. So let's do that. And I know that I took a bit of time on this because it's very important. If you want to create and you want to manifest, you're not trying to create and manifest by, in order to solve something, in order to react to something, in order to be better when you have it. That's not how it works. So I think everyone's got a true choice, okay? A true choice, I want you to write down something that's true, that you just want, because you'd love to have that. No reasons. So I'll think about a choice that nearly every single one of you will have. You choose to be financially free. Okay. Now, let me ask you, how many of you can just choose to be financially free with no reason why, just because you want it? And can you hear the little rattle that's there, right? As you choose it, <laughs> you know, I know. It's like I choose to be financially free, but then do you hear it? And then, and then, and then, and then, but because, and I'll help people and I'll do good things. I promise I'll be good with it, right? You can nearly, with some of us, when we try to choose just to be financially free, we then have to um, explain why we want it. Not there yet, that's all right. That's how you know you got a true choice is because you just you just truly want. So anyway, um, we've all got a true choice, yes? So let's just all get back to where we were and go, all right, I'm going to make this really true. What's true about it? And a lot of us, we need to go to the biggest thing. So some people say, you know, I want to have a successful business. Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? What do I want, right? No explanation required. Yeah, good. So let's all get into that right now. Has everyone got their true choice? Everyone's got something that they just truly, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Look at all that. Guys are all ready. Okay, so now that we've done that, okay, the true choice, what's it like now? Okay, you don't have to write anything down for this. I just want you to go, okay, that was my true choice. Compared to that, what's it like now? What have I got now? How does it feel now? And can, how many of you, when you do this, can you feel the tension? Just do this little exercise with me. Step into the true choice and feel it. So, you know, uh, one of my true choices uh, that are written up behind this um, banner is, you know, I, I, choose, I choose the end result to impact millions of people through my live events and programs. So that's my true choice. And it's so true. And then if I, if I come back, to now, what's it like now? And then I step into the now. I feel the tension. Yeah, yeah. So who can do that? Who can just step into that and then come back to now and let me know what's the tension like? Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Rosemary. Thanks, Carrie. We've got people writing in, it's atrocious now, it's a struggle, it feels yuck. So, so let me know, what's it like when you do that? It's important, we've got the recode coming up in a second. It's important. Tough, tight. Yeah. Heavy. So now, how many of you are feeling that tension? You're here, you want to you, you be there. Okay. So resistance. Yeah, got it. Got it. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for those of you typing in. It gives me good pacing for the session. Thank you. So I want to ask you, do you, yes or no, Know the next step, the next thing you must do to, to move towards that outcome. Yes or no? Do you know the next thing you need to do? Rosemary says yes. Gwen says yes. Camille, yes. Claire, yes. Ali, yes. Deborah, yes. Great. Okay. Thanks, Lexi. Yes. Bronya, yes. Heather, yes. Cool. 
Awesome. Awesome. So, so Kerry, if the answer is no, I don't know the next thing, well, the next thing to do is to find that, right? Wendy, not sure. So you either know the next thing to do or the next thing to do is to figure out what you're supposed to do. Does this make sense? Well, there's always an action, uh, Kelly, and I know it's your, I know it's your first, first session. There's always an action. So, you know, if we're the seed and we, we know we're already the forest, we still got to do something. We've got to plant the seed. And if the seed's already planted, if that's where we are, well, we've got to fertilize the seed and do, there's always something to do. Does that make sense to everyone? There's always something to do. And I love gardening as the best metaphor of manifestation on the planet. So there's always something to do. There's always action. So you, you know the action to take. Okay. So here's the question. Here's, here's the context. You know what you want. You know where you are. You know the next the next step to take. So you know what you want, point B. You know where you are, point A. And you know C, the next step to take that will move you there. Yes, that's the, that's the context. So here's the question. What do you do instead of taking the next step usually? How do you avoid taking the step towards what you want? Do you have inner dialogue that says you're not good enough? Do you think you need to learn more? Do you try to fix yourself? Do you, do you, what do you do instead of taking the action? Carrie just had a breakthrough. How do you procrastinate, Bronya? What do you do? Right. Think I need to learn more. Got it. Anything and everything but the action. I get tired. I go study more. I change it. I procrastinate. Beautiful. Thanks, Kerry. Pivot, go get busy with something else. Get busy with something else. Notice yourself right now. I want you to notice your sabotage pattern. Right now, notice what you do. You know what you're supposed to do. What do you do instead? And then what do you tell yourself? Here's the next question. What do you tell yourself about why you're doing these other things. What do you tell yourself? I'm just getting ready. I don't know enough. I've got to get this done. I'm not that. I don't know if it's the right thing. I'm not smart. What do you tell yourself? I'll get to it. Yeah, it's not a priority right now. All these other things are a priority. Beautiful. So we know what we want, we know where we are, we know the step that we're supposed to take, but instead we end up over here at point D. We're doubting ourselves, we're getting busy, we're doing all these other things over here because the psychological tension is stronger. So we've got a psychological tension that says, if I move this way, it's possible that I will show to the world my incompleteness and my wound. So instead, I'm going to do all these other things. And I want you to notice when you do all these other things, there is no risk of you making the wound right. There's no risk. Is there? There's no risk. So you go there, there's no risk. So your secret is safe. No one knows that you're scared of failure or you don't feel good enough or that you don't feel deserving. No one knows. Who's with me? 
Am I just speaking to myself on this? Is this making sense? So if we know this, we've got to ask ourselves why. Great eye opener here. Starting to feel excited. That's good. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Gwen. Good to know that it's landing. Thanks, Camille. Thanks, Bronya. So what I want to do is I want us to figure out and understand why. Because you creating this yourself. You're creating this. This is for you. So this is what I mean when I say you have competing tensions. And so you have a tension towards what you want, but you're going to go over here into distraction. You're going to do all these other things. You're going to get pulled this way. And so this will never move to there. It will, you'll always end up down here in this, in this other world of, of not having what you want. So I want you to look at this structure and we're going to look at it from different perspectives. Okay. So the structure is everything I've got on the board, okay? So the structure is what you want, where you are now, what you're supposed to do, and then what you do instead of what you know you got to do to get there. Does this make sense? This whole thing here is the structure, okay? So just, just go with me on this. Just tune in and close your eyes, and I want you to step in to the identity of your protector controller, your protector controller, the part of you that keeps you safe. And just step into that with your whole energy, your protector controller personality. You all have one. And just imagine that you can step into it. And I want you to ask yourself, from the protector controller's perspective, What does the protector controller think of all of this? Just take your time to really explore all points. What does your protector controller think of the, the goal? What does your protector controller think of the next step? What does your protector controller think about the current reality? And what does the protector controller think about all the distraction that you give yourself? Just explore it in your mind from the perspective of the protector controller part of you. And when you're ready, open your eyes. And I'd love you in the chat box or on a piece of paper Jot down what the protector controller thinks of this structure. Right on, Kelly. Yeah, tell me about it, Lexi. What was crazy about it? Right on, Ali. Uh, the only safe place is down here from the protector controller. Yeah. Don't do it. You're appear vulnerable. Yeah. It's fine to keep me safe. Right. Protector controller was numb or blinding me to all that's worth doing. It's safe. Right on, Lexi, cool. On guard. Right on, Sam, cool. Okay, awesome. <laughs> right on, Claire. So that's a part of you and a very necessary part of you. That's a part of you and a very necessary part of you. Okay. So we're going to go into uh, a different part of you now, okay? Scary stuff, right on. Okay, we're going to go this time, we're going to step into the striver, driver, achiever part of you. You all have one. So close your eyes, dust off that other one, and now step into the striver, driver, achiever, that part of you that goes for things, that believes, that's confident, that is going for what 
he or she loves. Step into the striver, driver, achiever part of you. That's it. Step right into that from that perspective. And now I want you from this perspective to look at this structure. What does this aspect of your consciousness think of the goal? What does this part of you think about your current reality? What does this part of you think about the next step? And what does this part of you think about the distraction, the where you go to stay safe? From the perspective of the striver, driver, achiever, part personality, I want you to notice its perspective. And just notice all, all of it. And when you're ready, you can come back, open your eyes, and either write it down and type in a yes, or type in the chat box and let me know, you know, what was it, what was the perspective of the, the striver, driver achiever with all of this? She's ready. Love it. Hurry up, play a bigger game. Interesting. Time to get shit done. Yeah. Got it, Carrie. Got it. <laughs> yeah. It's quite judgmental. A lot of your guys' achiever is quite judgmental, isn't it? <laughs> Right on, Wendy. Cool. Thanks, Sam. It's good awareness. These are aspects of your consciousness, right? It's aspects of you, isn't it? And it's interesting to see different aspects of us because when we do the superconscious recode, a lot of times uh, it's other part of parts of our personality that are holding back the main personality. Who's heard me when I do some recode sometimes? I'm like, hey, you know, can the part personalities, can we give them some treatment? Let's see. So we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to jump into this. So I want to ask you, when you think about your goal, when you think about taking this next action step, out of 10, how much resistance do you feel like you have? When you think about this and you, what you've just explored, how much resistance do you have? Cool. Heather's ready to go. Kelly's got a lot. Diane's got a lot. Peter's got a lot. Bronnie's got a lot. Debbie, Wendy's got a lot. Cool. Cool. It's going to have some big shifts. Some people are in flow. Awesome. Awesome. So that's going to be your measuring stick uh, for, for the session. So if you haven't done uh, a recode before, we're gonna, we're gonna jump in and we're going to do that. And so if it's okay for me to talk to you super conscious, uh, just give me, a, give me a yes, and it's okay for us to communicate with your super conscious and for, for you to have more satisfaction in life, that'd be great. And what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask the resistance to come out and so we can see it all. And it's like, uh, you know, it's like, it's like pulling, pulling the weeds out. We're just going to take what's in the way and we're going to pull it out and then we're going to plant the right things in because your super conscious created all of this. And so the protector controller, everything. So before we go into it, we're going to do a little bit of closed eye work, uh, meditation, then we'll do a bit of recode. Uh, it's going to be really cool. So, so if, if you're willing to do the recode, we're, we're going to do that now. So uh, just if you give me permission, go ahead and just close your eyes. 
and, and just relax and allow yourself to, to just, just relax a little bit. And just notice all aspects of this structure, what you want, where you're now, the next step, the resistance, and what it is that you want you do usually to avoid it. Just notice it all in super conscious. Can you please tag all aspects for future treatment? Okay. So I'd like you to step into your super conscious perspective. Step into the perspective of your super conscious, the part of you that's always been and will always be. Step into that part of you. And it's almost like you're looking down on this from a really, really, really high point. Like you're looking down on this from the moon or from uh, the sun or from a huge galaxy miles away. And you're looking down on this. And from the super conscious perspective, I just want you to notice what it feels like to be from this perspective. Super conscious, are you there? Yes. Can you see the protector controller? Can you see the striver driver? Yes. What's the truth? What's the truth? Superconscious, do you see this resistance? Yes. Could you please do a massive change history and please treat all aspects of this creation so that the current reality can move towards a desired state. Please treat all beliefs, emotions, and everything in between. Thank you. And if it's your first time, just breathe into your heart. Superconscious, do you see the original event? Please treat to a massive change history. Thank you. Cool, just keep breathing, allow yourself to notice what you need to notice as it just comes through. It's perfect. There's lots and lots and lots of shifts happening. It's great, you guys are doing awesome. Superconscious, do you see these two part personalities? Yes, please treat all aspects of each of them so that they can join with the main personality. Please treat the judgment of the current reality from the striver driver. Please treat the, the avoidance and the fear of failure of the protector controller. Please treat all emotions, thoughts, beliefs, memories, including memories one, two, and three. Please turn to a massive change history. Thank you. Superconscious, please step into the desired state. 
Step into the desired goal, the vision. Step into that super conscious. Do you see any resistance to this goal? Yes, please treat to a massive change history. All resistance to the goal, the fear, the judgment, the worry, family history, secondary intentions. Please treat into a massive change history of everything related to the goal. Superconscious, all the parts of us that have woken up, please allow them to have treatment and turn the volume down. And let's step into the desired next step. So what's the next step? Superconscious, step into the next step. And please go ahead and clear all resistance, fears, worries, judgments, erroneous beliefs, future events. Please treat into a massive change history, everything related to resistance for the next step. Thank you. Please treat to a massive change history. Thank you. That's it. I don't know if you can feel excitement brewing, but it feels like this whole group is just going to burst with excitement in a second. It feels really good. So one last thing, super conscious. Can we step into the current reality? Step into the current reality and please treat all judgment, worry, fears. Please treat, treat all aspects of the current reality and, and any beliefs around it not being good enough or being worse or scary or anything. Please treat and do a massive change history around the current reality. Thank you. And now we're here in the current reality. I want you to choose this end result with every part of you and just choose it. Choose to have this, choose to be it, choose to go for it, choose to be it in all aspects of you and just choose it. And what does it feel like now that you're it? What does it feel like now that you're already it? How good does it feel? And superconscious, please ground the memories we've touched today. Thank you so much, including memories one, two, and three. Ground them into the matrix of the universe, including all tandem memories, future memories, ego states, and all aspects of consciousness. Ground them into the matrix of the universe. And just take a couple big breaths as you come back uh, to where you are right now. Um, come back into your body. Back into the session. Back here with me. Whew. And now ask yourself, when you think about that goal, how much resistance is left? Is there any? And I'd love you to type in your old resistance and your new. So is it 10 to 0, 7 to 1? What is it? Kerry feels back on track. 7 to 0, 10 to 1. Beautiful. 10 to 0. Well done, Kelly. 7, 0, 10 to 3. Awesome. 10 to 2, 9 to 2. Beautiful. 10 to 0 and happy. <laughs> awesome, Sam. Love you. Well done. 5 to 1. 9 to 4. Cool. Bit of stuff. So we'll continue to work on this. It's all good. Uh, 10 to 6, but back on track, Kerry. So that's good. That's good. 7 to 4. Chipping away at it. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff.
How was that, everybody? How was that session today? Was it a good one? Deep, amazing, beautiful. Thank you. Fabulous, really good. So grateful to have you here, Kelly. Welcome back, Bree. Thank you, thank you, thanks, Peter. Awesome stuff, guys. So thank you for those uh, who are in the Northern Hemisphere and it's like two in the morning or something. You're absolutely amazing. Uh, Australians and others who are on the call, you're just as amazing. You're just not up at two in the morning. So, you know, I expect you guys to be here. <laughs> so brilliant stuff. Have an absolutely awesome week. We've got so much here for you. This is recorded. It's on Facebook if you'd like to go through it again. Remember, though, your future doesn't just show up, right? Oh, no, actually, it does. But you've got to choose which future is going to show up, right? And you choose that by stepping into a new you and then acting from that new you. True? That's it. That's how it shows up. You step into it. And so the whole premise, choose what you want. Notice where you are. Notice the resistance. Let go of the resistance. Act. Act. You see, you must take the action towards it. So I hope that you had a great session. I really enjoyed it. So that was fun. This is a manifestation for me. So thank you all. Thanks, Deb. Good to see you back. Been a while. Great stuff. Have an awesome rest of your week.